Uh, good afternoon. We wanted to uh, ask you all to come this afternoon to give you a brief update. Uh, in just a few minutes, we're going to be uh, releasing uh, four different schools from lockdown. And we want that to be an orderly process uh, as we transition uh, to inform our parents and others about how that is going to occur. We have uh, Major Durkee from the Orange County uh, System Public, School, uh, Public Schools uh, Police that will share some information with you about how that process is going to occur. We also will give you a, a little bit of an update uh, about what we're doing in terms of the manhunt that's on the way. Uh, and I will also tell you at this point, we will not, I still cannot identify the Orange County Deputy Sheriff who uh, was killed today. Uh, unfortunately, we're having some difficulty notifying his uh, family members because of some medical emergencies that they are having and they're uh, out of town. So uh, we will work through that process and then as soon as we can, we will release that information. So in terms of process, I'm going to ask uh, Major Durkee from the OCPS uh, police to come up and just share with you very quickly uh, about what we're going to be doing and transitioning the students out of the school. So, uh, Major. Good afternoon. Um, we have four schools currently that are in lockdown. Uh, they're going to be affected by this operation. Uh, Evans High School, Meadowbrook Middle School, uh, Rolling Hills Elementary, and Rosemont Elementary. Those schools are all scheduled to come out of lockdown one hour prior to their normal dismissal time, and the students will be released as normal. Uh, bus traffic will release kids uh, as they are released and as they would normally be released. Um, in addition to that, we have one area where the bus stop is not available, and we have contacted the parents via Connect Orange and notified them uh, to make other arrangements to pick up their children. So the district has communicated through Connect Orange, through its Facebook and its Twitter accounts, as to any changes in transportation routings, but the schools will all be released in their normal time. Okay. okay. Also want to share with you that uh, we have, uh, through a number of means, been uh, successful in increasing the reward amount. It's up to $60,000 at this point. We've asked the citizens of Orange County to call in with information, and they are calling. Uh, we're working temp tips at this point, numerous tips that are coming in through our crime line, and we uh, continue to urge people to call that number, the 1-800-423-TIPS number that you are all familiar with, uh, to call that number. Again, that uh, reward amount has been increased at this point to $60,000. Uh, we have had an ongoing uh, manhunt obviously going on. Uh, we have several hundred law enforcement officers who are out from multiple agencies who are assisting us with this manhunt. We're reasonably certain that we still have the subject uh, in this area. This is going to continue until we locate that individual. And so we have uh, unfortunately had to displace some people from their homes. Uh, I'm not going to focus on a particular area this time, but uh, we believe that we have a good plan of action here. Uh, we have a unified command uh, that we're working at this point between uh, the Orlando Police Department and the Orange County Sheriff's Office and our state law enforcement agencies as well. We all have assets that we have contributed to this effort. Uh, I do want to remind people that if you aid and abet this individual in any way, uh, in any way, uh, that those individuals are going to subject themselves to also being charged criminally uh, as we move forward. Uh, with, with that said, at this point, uh, I believe we have covered uh, most of the things that uh, we were going to talk about for this presser. Uh, I didn't want to keep it fairly narrow in terms of what we were going to discuss. Sure. Yes. Just on the off chance that, that this suspect may have access to a television, some sort of communications, is there, is there anything you want to tell this suspect specifically? Uh, I reiterate to this individual, uh, the best thing that he can do at this time is turn himself in. We would love to be able to resolve this situation peacefully without any further uh, uh, injury to anyone. Uh, so that's the best thing that I can tell him is uh, if he wants to turn himself in, we will certainly facilitate that process. Uh, but if we have to go in after him, then that jeopardizes and puts at, at risk the safety of law enforcement officers, etc. 
and uh, we, we cannot control what happens in, in that situation. So the most controlled thing to do is to uh, turn himself in, and we will work through that process with whomever to make certain that that is a, a peaceful resolution. Would you want him to call 911? I mean, what, what would be the best if he calls 911 uh, by any means, if he has uh, someone that is uh, he's working with, if, if he's talking to a lawyer that we are not aware of, we will work with anyone to bring him to justice and uh, let him stand his uh, day in court if need be. Uh, otherwise, this is going to be a very, very risky operation for all of us. The apartment complex that reduced for your deputy's death. Uh, there will be uh, charges uh, forthcoming uh, regarding uh, the overall investigation here. The situation involving my deputy sheriff uh, is likely going to be uh, uh, considered an accident. The Florida Highway Patrol is uh, working that investigation and they will make a determination whether or not the driver in that case is subject to uh, any criminal charges or if it can somehow will work through the state attorney's office, the prosecutor, to determine if uh, there's a possibility that he too could be charged with the death of uh, my deputy sheriff as well. The apartment in Rosemont that's been... model Volkswagen facade that was towed from near this area just recently? Uh, I'm not going to get into the vehicles that, that have been told and how they're connected or any of that at this point. I'm going to leave that up to the investigation. Yes. Sure. The apartment complex in Rosemont that you guys had surrounded all morning, has that been cleared at this point or is there still an ongoing search in that apartment complex? We have an ongoing search in this overall general area. That apartment complex is still a part of uh, the search area that we're working through at this point. Obviously, you know, those of us who wear a badge and, and protect and serve this community on a day-to-day -day basis uh, have been touched by this. So we are very highly motivated to bring this individual to justice. And so while we're processing our own emotional feelings uh, with the loss of uh, our colleagues here in law enforcement, we still have a job to do, and uh, that's the professionalism of these two agencies, I can tell you, uh, is above reproach, and we're going to do what uh, we have been trained to do. And Sheriff, are you concerned that as night falls, it becomes that much more risky, not only for your own officers, for all of these people out here, but for the general public as well? We're not going anywhere. If we don't have this individual by nightfall, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're going to stay at it until we find them, and um, that's what I can tell you there. Uh, thanks again uh, for, uh, we wanted to again put this information out for those parents who are going to be coming very shortly to pick up children. I have Thank a question you. about that, though. Yes, sir. What about the kids that stay in this area? How will they get home? Would you guys let them buy? Or? Yes. Okay.